Welcome into Taylor Kitchen. Today we are making a classic creme brulee. I know so many of my friends are like, that's my absolute favorite dessert. And we're going to make the classic creme brulee. No funky twist on it, just the basic, just luxurious vanilla creme brulee. And I'm starting in here. I've got cream. It's gonna heat up very slowly. And to that, I'm going to add a half a cup of sugar. And I'm just going to slowly heat the cream and whisk in that sugar. And when it comes up to temp, we're gonna add some eggs and some vanilla. But this is a super easy dessert, guys. You're not gonna believe how easy this is, but it's absolutely phenomenal. And while that slowly, slowly heats, everything's just gonna go back in here to the measuring cup that I have the cream in. We're gonna go ahead and crack these eggs. So here's the deal with the eggs. This is a double batch that I'm making because I'm making this for my Monday night crew. Um, my friend, uh, neighbor across the street, Karen, it's her birthday and her favorite dessert is creme brulee. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna make some creme brulee for our Monday night crew. I already made some dairy-free pumpkin creme brulee and you can check out that recipe on tkfoodie.com. But now I'm starting on the classic. And for this double batch that I'm making, it needs eight eggs six egg yolks and two whole eggs. So first of all, I'm gonna crack the two whole eggs. Maybe I should do that last, just in case I miss any up. Let's do that last. So six yolks and do not throw away the whites. We're gonna make some macaroons later. Actually, yolks go in here. I was forgetting my process. Shell goes in there. Two, I'm actually gonna have to quit talking and just count because I'll forget. <laughs> now with the whites, you can save them for an egg white omelet. You can make something like uh, a pavlova, which is a really cool meringue type dessert. The, it's so impressive to make and very simple. Or you can make traditional uh, macaroons, but for the whites, you just have to make very certain that no egg yolk gets in those whites and I will put them in the fridge and we'll make some macaroons. You've probably heard of coconut macaroons, but I have other macaroons and I wanna try a sugar-free version for my hubby. Okay, I did it with all the whites. Now I just have the two whole eggs. I think I can manage that. When you crack your eggs on a flat surface, they are less likely to crack to where you have shell in your egg. So, that's good. There's all my shells, there's my whites, there's my yolks, and the two whole eggs ready to go. I'm gonna give them a quick whisk up. You see this cream is kind of coming to temp. I'm just gonna be really patient with it. I don't wanna scorch it on the bottom, so it's on a very, very low heat. Let's give these eggs a little whisk up too. And to the eggs, I'm going to add in my vanilla. That should be a decent amount. Okay. Those are ready. I was storing my whites in the fridge from the creme brulee that I made yesterday, the pumpkin creme brulee. And so the rest of these whites are going in. I'm sticking them back in the fridge for the pavlovas or the macaroons that I'm gonna make later this week. Don't waste this. The cream is starting to come to temp, and so I'm going to temper these eggs with just a little bit of the warm cream, and that's going to make sure I don't curdle my eggs. So how that happens is into these eggs. This is my cup that I used to measure the sugar with, and this just goes in and constantly stirring, I'm going to add that warm cream. And so my eggs are getting introduced to the warm cream without having a bunch of hot cream dumped in or dumping the eggs right in the hot cream and then they would want to curdle. And I think I'm going to actually transfer it to this very large glass pitcher because that's gonna make it the easiest to pour into my ramekins so now my eggs go in there. They have a little bit of cream in them. 
See my thought process? Okay. Then the rest of this cream, I'm gonna pour slowly in while I whisk. No curdling allowed. Oh boy. I think my friend Karen's gonna love this. Hey there, if you haven't yet, please take a moment to subscribe and turn on notifications to our YouTube channel. Click that bell icon below to make sure you get all the latest from us. And give us a thumbs up and leave a comment. It really helps out our channel and we so appreciate you. So here's the part I love is filling your choice of ramekins. You can do these kind, you can do these kind. The pumpkin creme brulees actually did in little teacups. They're so cute. I'm going to be consistent and use these four ounce ramekins. And it's going to, I'm gonna need more than one pan here because like I said, I made a double batch. So I've got six in here and the rest will go in here. If I can fit one more in here, maybe. Yes. Okay, so using something like this just makes it very, very easy to pour. Whoops. <laughs> Fill them evenly so they'll cook at the same time. You don't want one to be overdone and one to be underdone. So having ramekins that are kind of the same size really helps. So there's that. And then the next thing you need to do is super, super cautiously is hot water. You're going to pour this into your tray. Do not splash it into your ramekins. You have to be so careful with this, but it should come about halfway up the side of the ramekin. This is called a water bath, a bon marie, and it's just going to help them cook evenly and not burn on the bottoms um, and just have a lovely texture to them. And then these are gonna go into my 325 oven for up to 45 minutes. Here's a bubble. Pop that baby. Okay. And then carefully transport this to the oven. Once these are done, you wanna carefully, carefully remove them from the oven. You don't wanna slosh this water around. My creme brulee is out of the oven. I made an extra one for myself so I could try this. And typically you want these to chill. You don't want to eat them right away while they're hot. You want them to set overnight or for a couple of hours and let them chill before you do the next step, which is the most alluring part of a creme brulee is that beautiful caramelized sugary crust. Now I had this all the time growing up, just this way, which we called custard, which is basically a creme brulee without the, the brulee topping. And it was a little bit more egg-centric than cream-centric, but I'm just gonna scatter a little bit of sugar. All right, then here goes the most fun part is the brulee. With a little brulee torch, you can buy these butane refills. Um, all right, so let's see if this will work for me. And, oh, here we go. This is what you want to hear. <laughs> I love it. Oh boy. That has a nice crunchy, crunchy, crunchy top. Oh boy. <laughs> Heaven, I'm in heaven. That creamy custard with that beautiful, crisp, brulee sugar on top that was smoking minutes ago and then settled into that little candied crunch that you get is just so phenomenal, so phenomenal. I think this is one of my favorite desserts too. So check out the simple recipe. It's on tkfoodie.com.